this Yukon behind me occasionally overheats. 90% of the time we don't have any problems out of it whatsoever. We can sit in traffic all day long, but every once in a while we'll go through a school pickup line or get stuck at a stoplight and the gauge starts to climb. Today we're going to fix it. If this video helps you, please help me by clicking the subscribe button. Now I suspect there's one of two things going on with this Yukon. The first thing is we may have a bad thermostat. And the second thing is we could just have a very dirty cooling system. Now the good news is in replacing the thermostat, I kind of can fix both issues at the exact same time. and. Whether it was one or the other, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the labor is the same. Uh, thermostats aren't too expensive. Uh, you can get them for pretty cheap. I've got an OEM one I think I paid around $30 for. And it's good insurance to so just go ahead while I'm in there and replace it. And I'm going to do a radiator flush at the same time. And we should have a very good running Yukon when this is all done. I should probably mention that there's a couple reasons I've come to the conclusion that I either have a bad thermostat or I have a dirty cooling system that's occasionally clogging. One reason for that is because when I remove the cap from the radiator reservoir, it is under a lot of pressure uh, even after it's cooled back down. So I feel pretty confident in saying I don't have a leaking cap. Uh, another reason is I don't have any other leaks anywhere in the system that I can find. I've also checked my belt. Uh, my belt does not seem to be loose, so I do not feel like it's not turning the water pump adequately. And I've checked to make sure my auxiliary fans are both coming on when it's hot. Lastly, uh, when I am overheating, I have checked uh, to see if it feels like the thermostat is open. And to do that, uh, what I've done is felt the temperature of the lower radiator hose when compared to the top one. And now this is an intermittent problem which is making this a little bit harder to diagnose but I do feel like there is a slight temperature difference between the two hoses when the thermostat should be open because it's overheating uh, and so that's making me think that somewhere I'm either getting a blockage due to uh, a dirty system or I'm having a thermostat that is sometimes not opening. Now these do not have a radiator cap or a radiator drain plug. Normally to drain this radiator you would take the lower radiator hose off and that could drain the entire cooling system and uh, you can flush it that away. In our case since we are changing the thermostat anyway we're just going to go ahead and break this thermostat housing open right here. You see this this is a lot easier to get to than that lower radiator hose and uh, we're going to just go ahead and take a couple bolts off and pull that thing out of there. There are two 10 millimeter bolts on this thermostat housing. Make sure you have a bucket under your car. It's also not a bad idea to remove the front plastic skid plate so that things are more easily drained down into your buckets. There's the old thermostat. Go ahead and pull that out of there. And then I'm going to lower this hose down below the radiator so that it continues to drain. Definitely have some crud uh, built up here in this thermostat. Now, we're gonna leave that out right now. And we're gonna go ahead and just hook this all back up. Get the thermostat out, we'll be able to do this cooling system flush a whole lot faster and easier.
Now I'm going to refill the system with a garden hose. I'm not always convinced that you can get uh, coolant throughout your whole system with no air very easily uh, by just filling your reservoir. I'd like to go ahead and remove this radiator hose, this top one. What we're going to do is squirt the hose into both sides of this and make sure that this system is just absolutely full of water. Let's start this thing up. So let that run for about 10 minutes and now I just turned it off. We're going to let it all cool down and then drain all that water out. Now we're going to do the exact same thing. Remove this thermostat housing and let the water drain out of it. Got the thermostat housing put back on again. Now we're going to add some radiator flush. I don't think it really matters which brand you use, but I've got Blue Devil. So, I'm going to pour the entire contents right into this reservoir. It's important to make sure that this goes ahead and gets all the way out of your reservoir before you start adding any water because you want to make sure that this is actually working its way through your cooling system and not just sitting in the reservoir while you do this. Just like before, we're going to add water and let it burp. And we're going to let this engine run now for at least 10 minutes. I'm actually probably going to let it run longer than that. So long as it doesn't overheat. <laughs> and turn your heat on. Just like before, I let this engine cool down a little bit, remove that cap to relieve the pressure, and then started taking the, the thermostat housing off to drain it. We now have the cooling system flushed thoroughly. I'm gonna go ahead, put this new thermostat in. Easy to do. Get here in the housing. Push it in there real good. And slide the housing back where it's supposed to be. And now just tighten down those two 10 millimeter screws. The new thermostat is in and that's all hooked back up. At this point, I would normally start filling this vehicle with a 50-50 mixture of distilled water and coolant, but I'm not entirely convinced it's fixed yet, and I don't really want to spend money on coolant that'll just get flushed back out if it's not fixed. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and fill this thing up with straight garden hose water, and I'll probably leave it in there for a couple weeks, and if it does not overheat, then I'll drain that out and I will then uh, fill it properly. So, so I ran this thing for two weeks with garden hose water in it and it never overheated. And so then I went ahead, drained it one more time and filled it up with a 50-50 ratio of antifreeze. Then uh, after that, uh, it's actually been probably five or 6,000 miles because it's taken me so long to get around to editing this video. Uh, but I'm now filming the last little bit and uh, I can tell you with 100% certainty that this thing stays cool all the time now and no more overheating issues whatsoever. So I hope that this video helped you. If it did, would you mind helping me by clicking that little subscribe button down there? I appreciate you.